they've already added the ability to Goomba stomp monsters, but let's be honest, what's more fun than hurling fireballs at enemies? Now there are two main ways to do projectiles in Unity. One is a ray cast method. The other is using a rigid body, and that's the one I'll be using here just because I like the way the physics work, and I also find that it's pretty simple to code. So to get started, you're going to need to get a sprite that you can use as your projectile. I've got a firebolt here that I'll be using for mine. Now once you get your projectile in there, you're going to want to make sure that your order and layer is set, set to something nice and high so that it'll show up above your other graphics. You're also going to want to make sure that it appears in front of your character, not on top of him. Um, otherwise, it will delete itself because it'll cause problems when it collides with him. Now to get this thing working properly, you're going to need a few components. One is some sort of a collider. Personally, I like the capsule collider. I'm going to change the direction of mine to horizontal, and then I'm just going to edit it so that it's about the right size. With that done, I'm then going to add a rigid body 2D and make sure that I take my gravity scale down to zero. And I'm going to create a new script, which I'm going to call projectile. This script will be in charge of moving our projectile and will actually be very similar to our player movement script. So we'll get started by making a reference to the rigid body. Next, we're going to need to make a public float called speed to keep track of how fast the projectile moves. And a couple of other floats, starting with projectile life, which will keep track of how long the projectile lasts. And finally, projectile count, which will actually do the counting down until the projectile disappears. Down in start, we're just going to do one thing for now, which is to set our projectile count equal to projectile life right off the bat. And in our update function, we want to make sure that our projectile count is actually counting down with each second. And then we'll add an if statement to make sure that if our projectile count is less than or equal to zero, the projectile actually destroys itself. We're also going to head down below here and we're going to add a fixed update function. And this is where we'll handle the actual movement of our script. For now, we'll just type it in very similar to our player movement script, except instead of dealing with our player rigid body, will be the projectile rigid body. And the x value of this one is actually going to be really simple. We're just going to go with whatever we set our speed to be. And finally, the y will just be its current y velocity. So projectile. Back in Unity, you'll make sure that your script is on the projectile, and then you'll just set a couple of these values. I'm going to start with a speed of 6. I'll set my projectile life to 2 seconds, and I'm also going to make sure to put my rigid body into the rigid body slot. Now you'll notice that when the game plays, the projectile fires quite nicely, uh, collides with the enemy, but of course nothing's happening at this point. And that's going to be one of the first things we're going to want to fix, is to make it so that our projectile actually damages the enemy. Now you may remember back when we were working with our dragon, or whatever your monster is, that we had a child object, which was the sprite itself, but on the main object we labeled this as our weak point. This is actually going to be what we're going to target with our projectile. So back in the projectile script, I'm now going to go down to the bottom and add a new function here. And this one's going to be an on collision enter 2D because we want it to happen as soon as we collide with the monster. And we'll check to see if if collision, meaning the thing we hit, dot game object dot tag is equal to weak point. Then we want to destroy collision dot game object. And that'll destroy the game object that we collide with, in this case, the monster. We also, at this point, want to destroy our projectile. So we'll also destroy the regular game object. Now, when we run the game, you'll see that our projectile effectively destroys the enemies. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually create a launch point where we can fire this projectile from. To do this, I'm going to head up to my main character here, my player. And I'm going to add, so I'm going to right click. And we're going to add an empty slot on here. I'm going to call mine a launch point. And this is where we're going to fire our projectile from. Now, once you've done this, grab your move tool and you want to move the launch point so that it's actually in front of the player. Again, so that when we spawn our projectile, it doesn't actually collide with our player, which could create some problems. Next up, we're going to want to create another new script. 
and we'll call this one projectile launch. All right, so for this one, we're going to want to start off by declaring some variables. We're going to start off by creating a public game object, which is going to be our projectile prefab. We'll talk about prefabs a little more in a moment if you haven't used those before. But this is essentially just going to allow this script to access our projectile so that it can spawn it and fire it. We're also going to create a public transform. And you'll remember that a transform is going to access this component here. And we're going to want to specifically um, find our position so that it knows where to spawn our projectile. Another thing we're going to do is we don't want our player to be able to spawn these fireballs or whatever it is rapid fire we want to have a little bit of time in between shots and so i'm going to create a couple of floats here the first one is going to be called shoot time and the second float will be our shoot count the time will be how much time it takes between shots and the counter will count down that time or as soon as we start the game actually we want to make sure that our shoot counter is equal to the shoot time and we'll set these values inside of unity once we get there and then down in our update function what we want to do here is first of all we want to check to see if an input and here i'm going to use a get button down and i'm going to use the fire one button now the other thing i want to do i want to check to see if i'm pushing the button down but i also want to check to see if my shoot counter is back down to zero so if it's less than or equal to zero now, if those things are true, we're then going to be able to fire this. Now, to do that, we're going to use the code instantiate. Now, instantiate essentially is coding language for the word spawn. And it always looks for three different values. The first value is going to be, well, what do you want to spawn? And in this case, we want to, to spawn our projectile prefab. You then put a comma. Next, it wants to know where you would like for it to actually appear. And we're going to have it appear at the position of our launch point. We'll then add a comma. And the final thing it wants to know is what rotation we're going to have. And for this, we're going to use a weird programming term called a quaternion. Um, in this case, we're going to use quaternion.identity, which means it'll just take on whatever rotation your sprite has. Now, finally, anytime we actually fire something, we want our shoot counter to start counting down again. So we'll set it back up to shoot time, which will briefly disable the ability to fire again. The final thing that we want to do here is we want to make sure that in our update function, the shoot counter is always counting down. So we want to make sure that we are taking away time dot delta time. All right, so back in Unity, we are going to click on the main game object for our player. So we're not looking at the launch point here, but the actual main object. And we're going to add our projectile launcher script. Now there's a number of values that we're going to want to add there. First of all, it wants to know what our projectile prefab has is. Now you'll remember that we created a firebolt, but at this point it's not yet a prefab. Now if you're not familiar with prefabs, I won't go into great detail here, but what you do need to know is that when you drag any game object down into here, it becomes a prefab. You'll notice that it turned blue up here. The beauty of this is that I'll now be able to spawn things from here, and I won't need to manually put every fireball into the game. It'll just draw them from the prefab. So now that we've made our firebolt into a projectile, we can head back over to our player. And when it asks, well, what prefab is it going to spawn? We can grab our firebolt and put it in there. It also wants to know where our launch point is, so I'll grab that off of my player, put it in there. And our shoot time. Personally, I like about a half second delay, but you can tweak it to get it feeling just right for you. With that done, you can now head into the game. You'll notice that I'm able to spawn, but there's this weird thing happening where my when I do spawn it, it immediately is destroyed. And what that usually means is that you set your launch point just a little too close to your player. So I'm going to move mine just a little further ahead. I'm also going to delete the original fireball object because I don't want to have one firing immediately when I start the game. Now one of two things may be happening at this point. Either when you turn right things work, but when you turn left your projectile spawns, hits you, and then destroys itself. Or if you've been following my 2D side scroller tutorials and you're using either the flip x or the negative scale method for flipping your character, then you might find that when you face right your projectile fires just fine, but when you turn left, it also fires to the right.
This is a problem we'll have to fix in the code. Now once you get in there, we're going to have to first of all, head down into your fixed update and we're actually gonna take out the sprite renderer flip section. Now the downside of this new fix is that it is a little bit more work, but it will make everything move much nicer with your projectiles. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new function down at the very bottom. And we're gonna call this one flip. Now in brackets after flip, we're gonna put a Boolean value, so true or false, and we're gonna call this one facing right. Now down below, what we're essentially gonna do is check to see whether or not our player is currently facing the same direction that his sprite is facing, and then to set it correct if that is true or to fix it if it's false. So to do that, we're gonna to have to head up here and add a couple of variables. The first one is going to be a public Boolean, and we're gonna call this one flipped left. This is just gonna check whether or not our sprite is flipped to the left or the right. We'll also create a public bool, and this one will be called facing right, and it's gonna check whether or not our player is facing right or left, and then we'll make the sprite follow suit. Now we're gonna head down into your fixed update, and we're going to go to the line where we look at whether or not your input is less than zero, meaning you would be facing left or moving left at least. What we want to do here is we want to make sure that facing right is set to be equal to false because you're facing left. The other thing that we want to do is call up our flip function down below. And then we're going to put brackets, but you'll remember that down here we said that in flip, there's also going to be a bool for facing right. So we need to let it know whether or not facing right is true or false. And in this case, it will be false. At this point, then we can do the same thing in if our input is greater than zero, meaning if we're facing right. So we'll make sure that facing right is equal to true. We'll still call the flip function because we want it to check if we're facing the right way and we'll let it know that we are indeed facing right. But down here in our flip function, we're going to add an if statement and we're gonna to check to see first of all, if flipped left is true, and we don't actually have to write true. If we just put flip left, it knows we mean true. And we are facing right, meaning if there's a problem. We're flipped to the left, but we're facing right, then we need to fix things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna access the transform of our player, and we're simply gonna rotate him. And we're just gonna rotate. We don't wanna change his X. We wanna flip his Y to negative 180, and then zero on the Z. Back in Unity, you can see how that works. If I click on my player, and I head over here, and I give him a negative Y of 180, you'll notice that it flips the player perfectly. The other beauty of this, you'll notice if I click the launch point here, and we'll just turn on a blue gizmo here for a moment, go back to my character, and now if I give him a negative 180, you'll notice that when he flips, so does his launch point, which is exactly what we want. So we now have it set up so that if we are flipped left but facing right, things get fixed. Now we just need to do one more, which is simply if we are not flipped left, but and we are also not facing right. So if the other problem is true, then we're gonna need to fix our transform again, and we're actually gonna fix it in the exact same way. Next, we just wanna make sure that when we flip the sprite to face right, that we make sure the script knows this by telling it that flipped left is now equal to false and that the opposite is true down below here, that flipped left is equal to true. Back in Unity now, you can see that when I face right, things work. I still flip nicely back and forth, but when I turn to the left, my projectile is now spawning on my left. Now that I have a brand new problem and we'll fix that next, which is simply that my projectiles spawning on the right side, but not actually moving in that direction. So to fix this most recent problem, we're gonna actually just borrow some information from our player movement script, which already keeps track of whether or not our player is facing left or right, and use that to decide which way our projectile should fire. So we're gonna start by just making two more variables in our projectile script. The first one will be a public reference to our player movement script. And the second one will be a public bool called facing right, similar to the one we have in our player movement script. Now we're gonna head down into our start function here, and we're gonna do a couple of things here. The first one is we're going to make sure that our projectile actually knows where the player movement script is. To do that, we'll say that player movement is equal to, 
and it's going to be a game object because it needs to find our player first of all. Player op, game object dot, and we're going to do find object with tag, and it's going to look for our player. Now the game will know where our player is, and it can start looking in the player for the script itself. So we'll type in get component because the component we want is the player movement script. Now when I type player movement anywhere else in the script, it'll know that that means the player movement script on our player. Down below that, I can now say that facing right is equal to player movement. So it'll look inside the player movement script and it'll look specifically to see what the value of facing right is in that script. And now this script will have access to that information. Now, once you've done that, as soon as this projectile spawns, it will check to see which direction the player is facing. And what we want to do is add an if statement. And essentially, if our player, it already, if he's facing right, the projectile works just fine. But if he's not facing right, then we want something to happen. And that is that we want to take the transform rotation, shift it 180 degrees on its y-axis. Now to do that, we're going to need to use this quaternion and finally put zero for our X, 180 for the Y, and zero for the Z. Finally now, down in our fixed update function, where we currently only have the projectile moving to the right, we wanna make sure that it only does that if we want it to. And so we'll add another if statement. So if facing right, then we'll use this line here, which makes our projectile move to the right. However, if that is not true, and we'll just use an else statement here, then, and we can use this exact same line of code here, except that this time, instead of having it move the x-axis being our speed, we're gonna make it our negative speed, meaning the x-axis, instead of moving to the right with a positive value, will move left with a negative one. Now, when we're back inside of Unity, we can fire in either direction really nicely, You'll see that it already destroyed that monster, and I can come up here to destroy the other one. Things are working quite nicely. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at how to create variable damage so that our fireballs don't just destroy the enemy outright. We'll also add some explosion effects so that we can actually make things a little more dramatic when the fireballs hit. I'm Matt with Nightrun Studio. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click the like button or to subscribe to the channel.